about uh, interpreting the in the future, the motivation to study clinical algebra from the point of view of, of uh, the understanding of representation, of smooth representation of periodic uh, reductive groups. So the situation will be the following. I will uh, be known by F and non archimedian local field. So it can be any non archimedian local field and no condition of the on the characteristic. So a finite extension of QP, in that case it would be a characteristic zero, or a field of equal characteristic, meaning that it's a finite extension of F of the field of for my series FP of T, and in that case he has characteristic T. And uh, people call it field of, of field of positive characteristic or of equal, equal characteristic, meaning that the characteristic of F is the same in this case as the characteristic P of its residue field. So now G will be uh, and what I shortly call the periodic group or periodic reductive group. Uh, by this, I mean the group of rational of F rational point of the connected uh, algebraic reductive group defined of over of, of my field F. So you can take uh, uh, your favorite example. Uh, for people in the representation of PID group, the favorite example is GL and F, because it is, it is the easiest work one. Uh, but maybe here we would prefer F and NF, or you know, classical groups like the sympathetic group, or even a group of exceptional type. Uh, so these are the split ones. And, uh, so, uh, so most uh, subtle example of non-split non group. I will say a few things about non-split group, but for example, unitary group would be such an example. Uh, so I will fix the representation at the moment, pi v of my group G, and uh, a vector is called smooth, as I uh, briefly explained yesterday, if the isotropic group uh, is an open uh, subgroup of the group G. And uh, if my representation is not, is not assumed to be smooth, I will consider a set of smooth vectors, which is usually called uh, V F T. What exactly is the isotropic group? Yes. Stabilizer. Oh, Stabilizer. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, so the point point. Uh, the element of yeah, the element of G which which fix my, my vector V. And uh, uh, so then if I consider the, the subspace of smooth vectors in V uh, with the same action, it is stable under under G and uh, uh, I get a sub representation uh, which sometimes is called the smooth part of my representation V. I can also consider the dual uh, representation. Uh, with the usual notion of dual, so the homomorphism from V uh, to C, a complex uh, uh, film. And uh, this uh, dual space V star, I can equip it with a representation P star, just uh, defined in a very natural way uh, as, as follows. Uh, this is the first thing, and this, this representation is very useful because it will allow me to introduce the notion of matrix coefficient of, of my representation pi, which is just a function. So I will fix two vectors, v and, uh, in V and V star with uh, individual space. And the matrix coefficient, uh, C, V, V star, which is just a function, from a uh, smooth function from G to C, which is defined by the product of V and the image of V star by V star of G, for any element G in uh, capital G. Okay, so if I start with a representation V which is smooth, uh, this representation, uh, V star, is not uh, always smooth, but we can do the, we can consider its smooth vector, uh, as I just defined before, so it's the smooth part of V star, but uh, which you usually call V tilde, and then I get a new representation, which is just a restriction of P star to V tilde. And this representation by, by construction is smooth, and it's called the contragradient representation of my representation pi V. So uh, this will be used uh, uh, several times. 
Uh, yeah. Purely not about nucleus, so it is preserved by uh, any surjective morphism, and uh, if you take sub-representation or sub-quotient or direct sum, uh, all of these operations preserve smoothness. Uh, okay, now uh, uh, my main objective is to try to classify the, uh, to understand the representation of my group G and especially to understand the irreducible ones and to classify them. And uh, to do that, of course, it's easier if my group is smaller. And uh, a very useful tool is uh, the notion of induction from a, from a subgroup of the, the group G. <coughs> uh, so this is what we have already seen appear in, uh, in, in several times, especially in, in the lectures. Uh, so, first, the so, uh, okay. uh, so I will start by H plus subgroup of G, and then I take a, a, a start with a representation tau, V tau of H. So sometimes I, I put tau in the, in the, as an index of my uh, vector space just to, uh, to, to preserve which, which is the representation that we are considering. And uh, take the space of functions F from G with value in uh, V tau, which are the following property, the, uh, the action of, of H on this function is uh, by the, the representation tau. And the second property is that there exists an open compact subgroup of G, that that, uh, which is attached to F for each F, uh, when F is fixed, that's why I call it KF of G, such that for any element K in KF and in GG, the function is uh, invariant by the action uh, of K. So I consider this space of function, and uh, I consider the, uh, the action by right translation on this function. And this, the, this space is, is stable by this, this uh, uh, action. And the, if you look, at this condition, uh, this condition is here to make this, so, this, so the action, the space is stable, so I get several, several representation, and this condition two is here to, to, to show, I mean, to, 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 to have to, the fact that the representation, that the sub representation I, the representation I define is in fact smooth. So this process, uh, give me a way, starting from the representation of my first subgroup H. If, my, if I start with a smooth representation, I arrive to a smooth representation of G. So it is called parabolic, uh, sorry, uh, induction or sometimes a smooth induction. Oh, sorry. Now, uh, uh, we should not forget that we have a, a PID group. And as you have seen uh, already uh, in Petra lectures, uh, one nice thing uh, of, of, of a Fiadic field is that you can play with sometimes the, the algebraic structure of a group, which I will shortly say the, the this building, or you can use the, the other BN BN pair, which is using the fact that you have a group uh, which is locally compact. And Again, here you can consider a subspace of my induced uh, representation uh, of the subspace of functions with compact support modulo my group H. Uh, compact support means that the support is contained in a, in, in a space H omega, where gamma is a comp where omega is a compact set in, in G. And this space is also a sub-representation. And this representation is called the compact uh, induced representation uh, by the uh, So in general, these two uh, representations uh, are different. But in the case where <coughs> the quotient space G mod H is compact, actually they, by definition, they uh, coincide. And these two inductions will play a role in the second uh, kind of complementary role. So now uh, I will consider, the, uh, I briefly explained yesterday, uh, the category of smooth complex representation of G. So it is an abelian category which has uh, arbitrary uh, co-product and we have 
and we will, I will explain the decomposition of that category. But for this, our need the notion of uh, parabolic subgroup. So we have already seen parabolic subgroup example in, in the previous lectures. For instance, if you have GLN, uh, you have seen, first we have seen BN there, so B is a Borel, and this is a particular case of uh, parabolic subgroup. If my group is split <coughs> over F, then a minimal parabolic subgroup is, is a, a Borel, a Borel subgroup coincides with a minimal parabolic subgroup. And uh, in general, also for split group, any parabolic is a conjugate in G of, uh, uh, of, of a group which contains uh, a Borel. Uh, so the general definition is the following. And, and for GLN, so the Borel is triangular matrices, and the parabolic will be uh, block triangular matrices. And you can also consider in this block, just a block, the diagonal blocks. And this will be what we will call the Levy subgroup. And of course, the, the block triangular matrix, if you take a, a block triangular matrix, it is a product of a diagonal block by uh, what it is up the diagonal block and, and uh, uh, identity on the, di on the di of diagonal and zero, of course, uh, below. And this is what we call the unipotent radical of a parabolic. So this works in general. So P will be uh, a parabolic. So I call, I put a, a balls uh, later uh, to mean the group defined on the algebraic group, so we can view it as a group defined on algebraically uh, close uh, on an, an, a closure uh, of my periodic field F. And uh, P, uh, in uh, just a usual letter, it is by definition the group of a, of a point of P which are uh, uh, over, over, over F. So, so ball P of F. So this group. Uh, ball P, admit the unipotent radical, uh, and uh, we can decompose uh, in similar way as in GLN, uh, the parabolic as a similar product of uh, its Levy component, with its Levy factor with its unipotent radical, which is called the Levy decomposition of a parabolic subgroup. Okay, uh, the definition of a parabolic is just the following. It's a, a group in, in that has a variety G mod P is complete, and the Borel is a particular case, a, a case of parabolic subgroup in which, uh, which is also a solvable. Uh, and uh, the unipotent radical, uh, if you consider the set of all closed normal unipotent subgroup of, of P, that is a, a unique maximal element in this set, which is called the unipotent radical of P. And again, there is a subgroup of L of G, which is called the Levy factor, which normalizes the U, and we have this decomposition. So, sorry. And I have something similar for the, for the F rational point. Uh, and then I can do uh, uh, induction. Uh, I can induce representation from P to G. P is cross subgroup. And uh, the quotient is compact, so there is no difference between here yeah, between compact induction or smooth induction. Uh, but actually, I will not uh, just inducing from P will be uh, not enough. What I will need is a, a composition of two functors, because what P, if you think of it, is is does does not have the same shape as L. So for for the Levy. In GLN, L will be a product of smaller of the diagonal blocks, so it's a product of smaller GLN group. So GLN1, GLN plus GLN2, etc. So and the idea will be taking representation of this product of GLN induced to in a certain way to get a representation of G. And this induction will be in two steps. And it's what I would yeah, and it's called uh, Arishandra induction or because it's due to Arishandra, or parabolic induction. So let's explain what it is. So I'll start with my parabolic subgroup. And uh, until now, I was just in GLN considering upper triangular matrices, but I can also consider a lower one, which is what we call the uh, 
uh, opposite parabolic subgroup. So we have the same le Levy uh, factor, but the unipolar particle is op the opposite. And if I take a parabolic subgroup P, uh, we have the modulus uh, character that we have already seen yesterday, we are calling delta, delta P, which is uh, uh, given by this formula, where our new P is a fixed uh, R measure on P. So P in particular is not unimodular. And then I will take a representation sigma of the Levy subgroup. And because P is a semi-direct product of L and the unipotent radical, I can extend a sigma to a representation of P, so I can inflate sigma from L to P by making it acting trivially on the unipotent radical, which is what is given here. And the fact that uh, um, we have a semi-direct product, then this representation is a well-defined representation of L. And so, uh, uh, of P, sorry. I start with sigma, which is a representation of L, and I inflate it to a representation sigma P of P. And this is this representation sigma P that I will induce from P to G. So this can be summarized as follows. Uh, the parabolic induction is the composition of the two factors. I start with a representation in my category of smooth representation of L. I inflate to the category of representation of P, and then I induce the usual induction from P to G. Uh, okay, so this is a very nice functor, uh, and it has, an le has, a, it has a left adjoint, which is called the parabolic restriction, and which is defined uh, as follows. So uh, the, the group U is uh, normal in, in the parabolic, and so as now I will do the, the reverse process. I will start with a representation of P, and then from P, for this representation that I denote by tau, I will define a representation of a lady, and just by, by taking the co-invariant co of my representation by, uh, uh, by the unit of radical. So I introduce this space, V of, of U, the space, the vector space, spanned by the, the element phi u v minus v, where v is in v and u is in the unit of radical. This space is stable by the action of p, and I can consider the quotient of v by this space, which I denote by v sub u, and this is a smooth representation of my parabolic p, <coughs> which is trivial on u, and so uh, if you look at the quotient of p by u, uh, you have a uh, canonical projection from P to P of U, which is isomorphic to the Levy L, because P is a semi-direct product of L and U. So this representation is in fact a representation of L, and it is smooth. Uh, and then, uh, then I, I, I am happy because I started with a representation of P, I get a representation of L. Uh, but in fact, what I would have to do is starting from a representation of G. Not, not of P. So what I do is just taking the, the adjoint of, the, of, of the induction, which is the restriction functor. So I start with the representation in G, restrict to P, and then I take the, the point variant, so I take this functor, and I finally get the representation of L. And this functor is the left adjoint, is left adjoint of the parabolic induction. Uh, so we maybe we could say, okay, you have a left adjoint, this is a right adjoint, uh, yes, but this is easy to, to prove. Uh, the existence of a, of a right adjoint of, of the induction is much more subtle, but it was proved by Bernstein. And, but it's not this one. But it's, it, 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 it's close to be this, but not quite. And the left adjoint of the, so this is the left adjoint, but the right adjoint of the parabolic induction is the Jacquet restriction, parabolic restriction, but with respect to the opposite parabolic subgroup. Okay, so we are here, we have two uh, uh, induction and its adjoint on both sides. 
uh, we can look at this particular important case. It's where the parabolic is just the Borel. And in that case, the, the Levy is a torus. And so the, the, the representation of the torus, uh, I mentioned one, the torus is commutative. And so I would denote my representation sigma just by k because it's a character. And this, the representation which occurs, the irreducible representation of my book G, which occurs as subquotient of this parabolic induced representation, are uh, called a principal series. So representation in the princip principal series is all of them, so are called representation in the principal series of G. Uh, now, um, I will switch to just kind of the opposite, the extreme case of, of uh, representation, uh, which is the notion of representation super, super cuspidal. Um, so what is representation super cuspidal? It's a representation which has a property that all its jacket restrictions are equal to zero for all proper parabolic sub. And uh, they can be, can be characterized as follows. Uh, using the adjunction of a, we can show that the representation is super cuspidal if it, and if it, it does not occur as a sub quotient of any. I mean, if you just do the adjunction, you will yeah. see that it does not occur as a uh, quotient of any proper parabolic induced representation. But for complex, for representation with complex coefficient it is equivalent to say that representation does not occur as a sub quotient of any proper parabolic induced representation. And another in, in useful characterization is that you look at the matrix coefficient of my representation, and uh, it is, the representation is super cuspidal if and only if its matrix coefficient have, have a compact mod center support. Uh, Okay, so just a just definition, but you will have, you will see some examples. But before that, you will first see why I, I would like to introduce the notion of super cuspidality here, is because of uh, uh, the following theorem from Ali Shama, and it's, I mean, this is related to what she used to call the philosophy of caste form uh, by of Ali Shama. And it says the following, if I start with a smooth irreducible representation of G, uh, it always occurs as an irreducible component of a, by irreducible component, I mean an irreducible sub quotient of a parabolically induced representation, uh, where P is a parabolic subgroup, of course, and sigma is a, a representation of a levy, which is super cuspidal. Actually, this is, if we know that it occurs in a parabolically induced representation form, it's, it's, it's clear that we can uh, assume a representation sigma is super cuspidal because I forgot to say that uh, parabolic induction is transitive. So if, if we start with representation, and if you know that it occurs in, in, certain, in induced of a certain representation pi of L, then if pi is super cuspidal, you are done, and if not, pi will be contained in a parabolically induced representation from a smaller group, from a levy of my levy L, and you keep going, and at some point it, it will stop, and you will arrive at a representation which is super cuspidal. Uh, so this is a very, very useful uh, result of uh, Ari and moreover, uh, an important point is that this pair uh, this levy and the super cuspidal, if you look at it, if you consider this conjugacy class, then the conjugacy class is unique. Uh, and it's, it, it is called the super cuspidal support of the representation uh, path. So we start with the representation, and if you want to, to know where it is, so we'll compute its super cuspidal support, and you will see that it is in, in this. Uh, parabolic induced representation. So this is Arishona uh, theory. Uh, but then, all what I have said now, if I, uh, I am, if, if you uh, backtrack back to from, from what I said today, starting from the definition of a parabolic subgroup, it works also for. Uh, I was taking a periodic film, but if you take, if you can also take a finite film. Actually, and do exactly the same, just move just uh, 
forget about smoothness, it's always smooth. And but if you have a PID film, you can introduce some uh, something more, or maybe you can. Okay, uh, if I have a finite film, I am happy with with, with uh, stopping here. Uh, and but if I am considering periodic film, it's interesting to look to, to view all the induced representation uh, from from a certain sigma and L up to some equivalence in order to get a better structure. So this will be hopefully be clear soon. And this uh, extra structure is is uh, was introduced by Bertin and it is the following. So I start with the lady and uh, we have a notion of anonified character of the lady. So it's a character, so chi from L to C star, and it is called anonified if it is trivial on every compact uh, subgroup of the lady. And now we denote by X and R of L, the group. it's a group, and uh, a group of anonified character of L. And then, instead of just considering one sigma, one superpospedal, I will consider all together the orbit of sigma by the action by this group. So it's what I call here by O. And uh, so, instead of considering, the, like here, the G conjugacy class of L and sigma, we will consider the G conjugacy class of L and the orbit of sigma uh, by the, the action of the group of anonified characters. So if you think of it, it's, uh, it's, it's equivalent to the definition that I gave yesterday on the blackboard. And uh, I need a name for all this, uh, this pair of S. So we will call it B of G. And if I, I want to consider the same pair, but with just the conjugation, conjugation action of L instead of G, I will put a small term with S to L and an index, and then we denote by pair S sub L. This is just a notation, a definition of analytic character, which allow me to define this notion, this, this set B of G. <laughs> and this is the set which will be useful. Um, now, I will, we have this result, which is a decomposition of the category of smooth representation of G in a dialect product. And what are the, and it's indexed by this element S, and here are some uh, subcategory attached to S. And what is the definition? Uh, so, so the subcategory of SG is, uh, by definition, uh, its object are the representation pi V, such that every subquotient of pi is equivalent to subquotient of a parabolically induced representation uh, from L and P for some parabolic subgroup with lady L, and of where sigma prime is in the orbit of sigma. So this is that in the composition. <coughs> and why it is very useful is because now, instead of, if you want to understand this category, you can, it is enough, I mean, it's equivalent, but to understand all this category for every category like this for all the elements as in the object. And these are much easier to understand separately than the, than the, the category of smooth representation itself. Okay, so as a consequence of the decomposition of the category, we have a decomposition about of the irreducible set as a set, the set of irreducible object of a category, which is just a, a Okay, I should not have written a product here, but it's, a, it's a, an union of, so it's a partition of this set as, uh, um, uh, as into subset, it's one subset for each uh, S in B of G. So this joint union? Yeah, this joint union. So just reverse my product. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, uh. And, um, okay. So now I will apply what I have just said. I will forget uh, to the category, the big category by itself. I just focus on one S in the object. So this S, I can write it as sigma G. And uh, so I have L, 
So uh, the notion of amplify character of L and <coughs> let L1 denote the intersection of the kernel of all the amplified characters of L. So it's a subgroup of L, and I can consider the restrict, I can restrict my representation sigma from L to L1. Of course, this uh, restriction is not uh, necessarily irreducible, but it's a sum of, of it's, it's reducible, it's a sum of irreducible uh, representation. And I will pick one, but I will denote sigma 1 V1. And I have this representation sigma 1 C1, and I, and I will induce compactly from uh, L1 to L. And it, it can be checked that this, uh, this induction does not depend on the choice of the irreducible component of, of the restriction. So, I, I, so it gives me a, a representation of L here. And then uh, um, okay, uh, so which one? And uh, yes, and then uh, and then I, I, I forgot to explain one thing. And then I can induce now this representation uh, parabolically from L to uh, to G. And what I get is what I did not hear as pi s, and the functor and the, this pi s in fact it's a, it's a progenitor of, of uh, the subcategory R s of g, and it, 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 <coughs> that proof that the functor will sense the uh, my representation to be homomorphism from pi s to b is in fact an equivalence of uh, from the subcategory R s g to a certain algebra, which is the, the endomorphic, the commuting algebra of this representation pi s. Uh, so this is very, it's, it's very useful, and it gives the, sick, um, the motivation to understand, to try to understand this algebra. So this I will explain more uh, in this session uh, in my uh, third talk. But the point is that this algebra, in, in many cases, it's an <coughs> a fine theta algebra. And in general, it's, it's close to that. It's a um, generalized version of an affine theta algebra for every, every S. Um, OK, as an example, but when we come later, you can take for S the torus and the trivial representation, and for sigma, the trivial representation of the torus. And then you can try to, to, to see what, what it is, and, 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 and it's an interesting case to, to study. <coughs> so I will come back to this uh, later. Uh, so this, until now, what I have said here is just for any, any I was just using the notion of parabolic subgroup, just for this building, and it works perfectly also for finite field. And actually, for finite field, it's just, it is due to our genre. And here, if you do that, you get just an usual the fi uh, finite the finite genre. So not the fi so if I take just the torus and the trivial, you will get just the usual Nicolaitian block of attached to the Y group of my group. And uh, in general, you will if if you assume just for a few minutes, if you take uh, F two guys. Uh, then uh, I will have S. So here I will just write S like this because there is no notion of unamified character. So now this group, this will be uh, finite, finite connected group. And uh, I will have parabolic induction as before. Of sigma, and I can consider the commuting algebra, so the endomorphism algebra, in the just of this. Uh, it simplifies a lot because uh, I do not need to restrict to this group L1, and, and L1 is L, I just have this. And then, so maybe I'll put a bar, uh, I don't know, it's something to say, but it is on the final shape. And then here, yeah. 
and maybe sigma bar. And then here, this, uh, this I will denote it by H, what do I say notation? H F bar of G. And this is, is an, sometimes it's called Iwori EQ algebra or EQ Iwori algebra. And um, so, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, and an example is where L is T torus and sigma is 1, and then in that case, H if, you know, then H bar G here is just the algebra of well this this is the y group of g which is in the normalizer in g of g small g okay so this picture is the generalization on the periodic setting of this one but as we have seen the, on PIDIC, you can also play with the, the building. We have two uh, tits building, the, the, the one at infinity and the one locally for on the residue film. And this algebra will also play a role in, in relation with PIDIC setting. Um, okay, so this is one thing that when you are on a PID group, you can play more with, uh, with the curative building and with, uh, use more the structure of the, of the field. And this is, for instance, what is done uh, using the theory of types, which is, we can be viewed as, a, as a kind of parallel approach of the, of the question, yeah. uh, more related to the structure of, a, of, a, of, a, of G as a locally compact group. And for this, you will introduce the fixed Haar measure, and you will introduce the, the algebra of G, uh, which is denoted uh, by H of G, which is a space of complex value, locally constant, compactly supported function on G. And we can, this space can be uh, made to be an algebra if for the following uh, product, the convolution product, which is the visual convolution. So you have two functions in H of G, and you evaluate a function on G as the, the integral on G of the value of F1 on F and F2 on X minus 1G. So this is something very, which is very natural to do. So this big algebra, uh, so it, it's an associative algebra, it's very interesting. Uh, at the same time, it does not have a unit, it's not unitary, it does not have a unit element. Uh, okay, uh, so now I will start with the representation. Uh, I say that I will use the, the, the fact that I have a PID group. So I will consider a compact open subgroup J, J of G and the representation of that group J that I will denote by lambda, V lambda. And again, it has a contact gradient. And we can consider a subalgebra of the algebra H which is attached to uh, this pair J lambda, and <coughs> we denote it by H G lambda, and it is by definition the space of compactly supported function F with from G with value in the homomorphism algebra, so of V of uh, the space of the compact gradient of lambda, <coughs> and which satisfies the following property. If I take a, a double class. Okay, this, this, this k, k, k should be j. If I take <coughs> j and j prime in j, and I evaluate my function on, on j, g, j prime, then I, I require that this is equal to lambda theta j, f of g lambda theta of j prime. Sorry, I have typos. <coughs> and again, uh, using the convolution product, it's equipped uh, this algebra with the structure of a unitary associative C algebra. Uh, and, uh, um, very interesting and well known uh, situation. Uh, um, example is when you take for J, for instance, an Iwori subgroup of G, 
and for lambda, the trivial representation of G, that this condition just says that the function is B invariant by, by invariant by the action of the Iwori subgroup. So, uh, and you get the, uh, a certain algebra that which will show up later. Uh, and, okay, I have said that the, the big algebra H of G does not have a, a, a unit, but this one has, and you can define it as follows. You can define an eigenpotential of, the, of H of G. Uh, so if we were in the case where uh, lambda is, is just one, it's just a trivial representation, you just take the characteristic function uh, of, uh, of J. And here it's a, it's a generalization of this. So you, uh, if the element is G is not in J, you take zero, and if your element is in J, instead of taking one, you take the dimension of your representation lambda, divided by the volume of the group, J, and uh, the character of lambda uh, at uh, G minus. And you can check that this, uh, this, this, this function, E lambda, is an eigenpotent, meaning E square is equal to, uh, E lambda square is equal to E lambda. And you can consider, uh, if you call the corner algebra, uh, the, the convolution product of H of G by E lambda on both, uh, both sides. And this one is a subalgebra of AG, uh, which are unit element E lambda. Uh, so what is the relation between this algebra and the one I defined just above, HJ lambda? The relation is the following. Uh, so we can define, uh, just defined by Bushman and Katsko, a canonical isomorphism between the corner algebra attached to lambda and the tensor product of my algebra H of lambda with the endomorphism algebra here. In particular, they are uh, Morita, these two algebra <coughs> are Morita is related. And this is very good for us because uh, in that case, we get an equivalence of category between the category of modules of the algebra attached to, to J lambda and the, and the corner algebra. Uh, okay, and when we are in this situation, we can also consider a certain subcategory of the uh, category of smooth representation of G, which is defined using our uh, object here, so J and lambda. And this category is defined to be uh, the category whose, op whose objects are the, the representation V, such that V can be written as H, G, uh, can be generated by E lambda V, in, uh, by E lambda in, in AG. Uh, so this is a category which is generated over G by the subspace E lambda star. So this is, it looks very different to what we have in Berg's in theory, but it's also a subcategory. So it's natural to, to ask if there is a relation between this uh, two way of uh, studying the, the question. And uh, this is the, what the theory of types is uh, supposed to do. And uh, so the definition that we to say is due to uh, Bushnell and Katzko. Uh, you start with a finite, we can just take one element, but to be, in, in some cases it's useful to have the possibility to have not just one element, but a, a finite subset of it. So let sigma be a finite subset of, of, of element S in B of G, so this is the Bertin set. Then a pair J lambda would, would be called a sigma type for G if the following property is satisfied. So lambda occurs in the restriction of a representation P in the uh, in representation of G if and if the representation phi is in the set sigma. Uh, and if uh, in the case where sigma is a singleton, S, we just uh, refer to uh, to this uh, notion that an S type. So we forget. Uh, yeah. And the typical example of S type is the case where you take uh, for J the, an Iwori subgroup of G and for lambda just a trivial representation of G of J. 
and, uh, and this one is an uh, S type. So the pair of S uh, of the with bond with maximal torus and the trigger of the notation of the torus. So you think of it, it means that because of this relation, you, it's the set of pairs given by the torus up to conjugation, and if instead of one, you can take all any identified character of T. And this example was studied many years ago by uh, Borel, and it is really the, the example which was uh, motivation and uh, is inspiring uh, example to define this more general notion of type. And you can uh, exercise, replace a, uh, take GLN, for instance, or SLN, and replace I by the maximal compact of, uh, of our group, for instance, SLN, uh, GLN over OF, over the ring of integers of S, and take the trivial representation. And question, is it, is it a type? And uh, the answer is no, except if you are in GL1, because in GL1, um, it would be just the same case as here. Uh, okay. And then, uh, so now I can uh, answer the question about the relation between types and the previous decomposition, and which, which was the motivation to, to introduce the notion of, of S type. So we start with sigma finite subset of B of G if J lambda is at S type of, of, of if J lambda is a sigma type of G, then the category defined by lambda L lambda G is a product of, the, of this subcategory RFG for all the S in G. And in particular, if sigma is a singleton, it's just a singleton S, we have these two categories coincide. So L lambda G and RS of G. Uh, so if S and S type, then this category are and so this is very nice because then it says that uh, this category is equivalent, uh, thanks to what we have just said, to the category of modules of this equation. Uh, so now if I try to summarize what we are, so we have two ways of studying the category of RHG. In, so first we decompose it as, uh, using Darcy decomposition. And then you arrive to a category R, S of G. And then you have two ways to look at the category R, S, G for a given S. Using the, Vance, the, the algebra defined by Bernstein, which I like to view as using the point of view of a spherical building of G, or using this algebra, which I, again, I like to view it as the point of view of your fine building, because it, I mean, it's not exactly the fine building, it's, it's, it seems to be more general because you, uh, J is an a priori, you can think that it is an any um, open compact subgroup, but it's not any, because the condition that it is an S type is very rigid and, and, uh, uh, an S type, not, not any compact subgroup or any representation is an S type, it's, it's, it's very specific. And the way to, to construct S type is really to use the quadratic value. Uh, so we'll see this uh, on, the, on my last talk tomorrow. Uh, so I think, okay, uh, so just a few things. Uh, so I will stop now, but tomorrow we will first look at the case of anamical representation, which would be not a type, but still very interesting, it will be the case of K1, so the, so the representation of this, of this algebra, so the, the, the algebra of functions which are B invariant by the maximal compact, and then uh, the structure from K to algebra of other. But I will stop here, because I think. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Are there any questions? Yes? Could you perhaps uh, explain a little more in detail the two points of the first table again? Or how should one see the building in 
Uh, okay, this is, um, okay, this I will spend more tomorrow, but, my, but just to try to, 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 to fix the idea. Uh, in fact, of a spherical building, you can also, it's what, just to, to spherical building, it's also, you can also view using just a parabolic circle. It's, uh, just as an intersection of parabolic circle. It was just what I was saying. I just I would like to say that this is valid, this first part is valid for over any field. Really. You just need to have a, a, a set of parabolic circle. And but the second case and the second interpretation, you really need a structure of a PR deco uh, to have com compact open subgroup in it. So it's, it's, this one is totally different. And, and only works for PR so it's just, It was just to try to, uh, and, and maybe it will be clear tomorrow because I will give example, and, uh, and you will see how it works, hopefully. Another question? Yes. 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 So, so when we were defining these unmagnified characters for L, yes, we had that group L one. Yes. The kernel of all those guys. Is that a compact group of L? Always or? Uh, it's the union of all the compact subgroup. Oh, so it's all. Oh, it's not. A, oh, so it's a, so it's a compact group then. Uh, so it's a subgroup, right? It's a subgroup. Yeah. And it's the union of all compact subgroups. Yes. But it's not itself a compact subgroup. Ah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's confusing. Many of you have exactly the same question for me. Okay. <laughs> because I was, oh, well, what, is what is going on? Yeah, yeah. so I can consider it contains all the compact that for sure. So yes. There are on the north and so on, but okay. Okay. Yes? So in particular, if the group has no. Yeah, yeah. The 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 group. The whole group. Yeah, uh, in particular, it is contained in the derived subgroup of the group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More questions? Yes. Can you, can, can you repeat an example of a pair that does not form the type? If you take yes, the take GL2 G, G, GL over OF and the trivial representation of GL2, of GL2 OF. Okay, I will, uh, it's an exercise for tomorrow, I will explain tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> to do on the boat or to, or to, or to drink drinking beer. <laughs> okay, okay, then a um, reminder that you we follow Yari to get our photo taken. And let's thank Amdani again.